let me make it very clear <clears throat> to anybody that wants to attack me like a wild dog my hunting and little work uh, walk for birds is over <clears throat> Happy Saturday. Beautiful, beautiful early evening here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. In fact, it's a little too warm. Oh, Nelly. Okay, folks, here's the deal. This is gonna be one of those uh, <clears throat> little videos. I got about 20 minutes. <coughs> it's gonna be one of those videos where I'm just quite simply gonna give you a small page out of my book especially for some of you uh, longtime followers that are uh, into the channel, enjoy it, and all that other stuff. Uh, you're not going to get too much uh, action uh, here at all. So if that's not up your alley, uh, I will respect you uh, logging off right now. Uh, okay, it's, a, it's an early Saturday evening. Uh, it's, it's, it's just shy of 6 p.m. Um, I decided to stop and smell the roses just a little bit here. Um, after evening chores, um, jumped on the ranger, grabbed the orange vest, and uh, shotgun, which I'm going to show you in just a little bit, and hit a couple of my, my little go-to spots, and then I hit this spot. So, a couple videos ago or so, I told you that I was going to go somewhere that's fit for a calendar. To me it is. This place also means a lot to me uh, within my earlier years. And I'll explain that. That's what this video is about. A small page out of my book. I think this is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, you ought to see this little roadway here in the early winter. Unbelievable. <coughs> just uh, real nice. And we're, we're going to head down there too. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what it's all about down there. We are in an undisclosed area. Uh, this is a 40 that does belong to uh, uh, a family member. <coughs> uh, it used to belong to my grandfather, uh, who is no longer with us and hasn't been for quite some time. And of course, naturally, one of his sons, my uncle, um, acquired it respectfully. Um, okay, where do I start? This property here. Now let's let's go from here. All right, I went on a little bird hunt, uh, very unsuccessful. Uh, I did flush up a couple. Ah, I was dehydrated. <laughs> uh, flushed up a couple. I hurt, got some drum beats. Of course, right now I'm after uh, partridge, rough grouse. And this is a nice little haven for them right here on this road <coughs> and everything in between. Okay, ammunition. Uh, of course, I'm using a 20 gauge uh, over under shotgun. I'm gonna show it to you in a little bit. Um, very quite simply, I don't know if I'm the only one, but uh, many moons ago, <coughs> if you can recall uh, that ammo shortage, let's forget about now. Well, I was one of those crazy psychos that uh, uh, collected every bit of ammo that I could. Anyway, I got my hands on a whole bunch of... Uh, now, of course, we're talking shotgun shells. That's a little different. Um, this is quite simply just your two and three quarter. This is six shot. That's what I use for birds. <clears throat> um, in this nature, anyway. And then uh, you're going to have to pardon the uh, back of the ranger. Okay. Remember, this is a video to give you a page out of my book. This is a 20 gauge over under, uh, and this is by Mossberg. <clears throat> my checkbook does not say Benelli or Winchester, I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, beautiful gun, fantastic shooting gun. So I picked this up probably six or seven years ago. Um, this was a treat to myself. After every big project <clears throat> or a lengthy stay at a project, even if it wasn't completed, you know, before going on to another one, um, if I seen fit, I'd always kind of treat myself to something. 
you know, because I'm talking about you. I was away from home sometimes uh, a couple months at a crack. There was a period in my life where that was that was true. I wouldn't see home for two, two and a half months. I don't think I ever did any three-month ventures. Well, when I was overseas, I did, but that's we're not going down that road. So anyway, yeah. <clears throat> uh, this is the Mossberg. Couldn't even tell you the number, model number, if there even is one. Over under, beautiful gun. Um, I'm a little ashamed of myself. The stock is got some nicks in it. Uh, that just that just happens. Okay, so remember, I'm giving you a page out of my book. This is not going to be a very interesting video. To some years, I hope it is. Many, many, many moons ago, and of course, this was when I was in school. <coughs> Junior high. Ah, even like sixth grade. And, uh, of course, my earlier years of high school, as you can see, there's a road in here. We did a lot of cutting in here. Lots of cutting. In fact, the Visor Farm, the Visor Family, that's... <clears throat> we, we've done a lot of that. Um, yes, folks, to some of you young'uns watching, to get ahead, keep up, or to make ends meet, you also had to work on Saturdays and Sundays. And for us, it was cutting in the woods. In one form or another, whether it was firewood, uh, in this case, cedar, cedar bolts and posts. And uh, we've even taken on some uh, veneer grade hard maple. Uh, yeah. So anyway, in my earlier years, this was, these, my, a lot of my Saturdays were out here. <clears throat> there was a hefty, hefty, hefty um, pocket of beautiful cedars back there and all around there. And then there was another pocket that we're going to go see. So basically on Saturdays, you know, Saturdays was a holy grail deep cleaning of the barn day. I dare say from 8 a.m. to 11, 11.30 a.m. It was all about a deep cleansing, cleaning of the barn. And we're even talking about uh, brooming down walls and ceilings every Saturday. <coughs> After that, it was free rains. Not free rains, but work on something else. Most of my Saturdays in the fall, late fall, and winter as long as the snow wasn't too damn bad, to, you know, get a tractor and a dray back here. Um, I'd come out here and help all afternoon long, you know, until evening chore time, um, helping move brush, collecting posts, loading up the dray, and of course we did all that by hand. Well, so here's the deal. That's where I used to make my spending money um, as a younger younger little idiot <laughs> there's no other way to put it I couldn't call I can't call myself a young man um, no I didn't get paid for those big long Saturdays it was work my payment came where I had full reins towards the cedar brush which is a big ordeal up here. I can only assume it is somewhere other places. Um, after the, the day was done of dedicated logs and logging, I had free rains after the brush. <coughs> Especially in the later fall. Because if you start cutting down these cedars, um, there's still some beautiful cedar in here. But you can't go cutting everything, for God's sakes. Uh in the winter time dead of winter or snowfall uh, you cut a tree down like this which of course is a cedar uh, that thing will be bare bare the next morning the deer come in and they eat the cedar it's a form of warmth for them 
<coughs> so, yeah, that's where I made some spending money, some gas money, some maybe cans of chew money. <laughs> back when I was a little tyke, uh, I'd come back out here and uh, cut the remnants, which, of course, was the brush, make big bundles. And uh, be quite honest with you, if you spent a dedicated Saturday or a dedicated Sunday or any day of the week, whatever, wherever there was time, and there wasn't a lot of time, if you were dedicated, you, uh, you know, back then it wasn't worth a whole lot, but if you were dedicated, you, you could make a $100. Uh, in four hours so a little page out of my book so anyway with one hand I need to try and put this gun back in this case and lo and behold we're gonna probably flush up a partridge on the way to the end of this road come on just give me two seconds sorry about that so yeah that's that on that story I spent a lot of time out here a lot of time <clears throat> few hefty bucks taken out of here in the past years this is nice and open for two reasons number one some of the cutting that's been done back here number two to thin it out and open it up for of course uh, uh, what we'll call them fire lanes for uh, for deer hunting <clears throat> This was another big pocket of cedars. And of course, there's still a lot of cedars in here that was for cutting. You can almost maybe make out this makeshift trail that was down here, uh, you know, to get a tractor and dray down there, which we always played hell with, but I uh, always managed to get out. There's another makeshift trail that goes down here. And uh, that's about it, folks. About it. Just taking a little stop here to smell the roses. <clears throat> I've had some time here this evening to either take on a couple jobs at the farm or go play hooky. <laughs> Farm's in good shape along with all the animals. Everything's just fine. I got a little more time here, and I have a, uh, we'll call it an event, that I need to respectfully uh, attend here this evening. And, uh, yeah, got a good old-fashioned fall little Saturday going on here. It feels pretty nice. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hope you're uh, enjoying your weather pattern as well. I will fully admit to you, as, as nice as this is, <clears throat> I'm really looking forward to getting the season over here, and I'm talking the farming harvest season. I am two blinks of an eye away from chopping corn, getting that in, <coughs> silos filled, flattened, and then of course uh, we're another couple blinks away from going after the alfalfa uh, and wrapping it to make fermented baleage. That is right around the corner. This weather has been an absolute blessing. 
We did not get our rain yesterday that we were supposed to. Uh, that's going to hurt a little bit. <clears throat> we're starting to get extremely dry here. But we do have rain scheduled for, I believe, Monday. So let's hope we get it, including this pure sun. Uh, a lot of this heat, it's doing nothing but uh, continuing to grow that alfalfa for, for just, just a little thicker of a crop. And uh, I guess life is perfect. Why I look at this and there sure is a lot of downed downed wood here for now that stuff that that stuff's too punky you're not gonna you're not gonna cut that up for firewood chunks but I'm seeing one leaning right there that can be and then this stuff in here maybe a guy needs to take a Saturday afternoon and get in here that's cedar <clears throat> that's split Either it was dead, or a uh, from wind, or or something. That's a hell of a lot of wood right there, and it's cedar. That would go great <clears throat> at camp. In fact, uh, that's that's right up my alley. Harvest season done is done. You're gonna get another video here of uh, cutting some uh, cedar firewood. Fantastic. Living in a perfect world, folks. <laughs> I got to get my button gear. We're going to talk to you sooner and later.